Okay, here we are on this fine rainy day. It's actually my birthday, so I hope y'all are happy that I'm doing work with y'all on my birthday. So, we're on lesson 2.11. I'm going to teach you that today via video. Okay, let's look at it. Here's theorem 8. And theorem 8 says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are equal. Well, if you don't, can't remember which terminology they're talking about, we can flip back to, oh, where'd it go? Shucks, hold on. There we are, page 67, down here where it describes the different terms, interior, exterior, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and corresponding. You need to make sure you're familiar with all of these terms because they're going to refer to it from now on. That's what's different about geometry. You have to get a whole new set of vocabulary. So, this theorem says that we're going to prove that the alternate interior angles are true are, are, are equal and according to this, alternate interior are going to be ones that are opposite of one another on the transversal inside the parallel lines there, okay? So, in this case, if we've got lines B and A and they're cut by T, transversal T, at points R and P, they form alternate interior angles D and E, okay? So follow along in your book and you'll be able to see as we go through this, okay? So we're given that. Now, it says we want to prove that D is equal to E. Now here's the analysis. Let's go through the analysis with them. Number one says either, and, and this, is, this is what proofs are about. Either you decide you're going to prove, you're going to go through a process of steps and you're going to prove what they've asked you as true, D equals E, or you're going to prove that the opposite is true. Okay, in other words, in this case, D is not equal to E. So which one are we going to prove? Um, which one must be shown impossible? So usually when you do an indirect proof, an informal proof, where it's just some sentences, that's where you're proving the opposite cannot be true. Well, not always, but, well, you can't do a proof and show that something's not equal. So usually um, showing something's not true is done through, like, an indirect informal proof. Okay. So, hang on just a second. Karina, shut that door. Please. Please shut that door. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, number two says that if D did not equal E, let's say we had some lines, and, and let me draw them. Well, I'll draw them in just a second. If D did not equal to E, it would, be, it would be possible to draw a line C through P, making an angle at P equal to D. Okay, so let's look at Theorem 7. Okay, Theorem 7 was back on page 68. It says, when two straight lines are cut by a transversal, if a pair of interior angles are equal, then the two straight lines are parallel. Okay, so what it's saying is, let's suppose D and E did not equal one another then it would be possible, based on Theorem 7, to draw a parallel line so that they were equal. In other words, if this were... Let me get out my notebook here. And some colored markers here. Okay. If this were line... Hold on. A. Okay. And then we drew a new line... C, such that we had a transversal P that then made angles uh, D and some new angle equal, we'll call it X. If we had those equal, then by theorem 7, we could draw this new line C parallel, then we would know that, par that C was parallel to A. Okay, so this is, now we're going on the assumption, we're trying to say, okay, that it's impossible for D and E not to be equal to one another. Sorry about that, okay? So, it's saying that, okay, let's just assume it's not, let's assume they're not equal. Let's see how we would go about that. Well, if they were not equal, then we could draw that other line like I just drew in my notebook with a new line being parallel to A, okay? But, 
Look at number three. Then what relationship would C have to A? Well, they'd be parallel. Why? Because of theorem seven. That's why it's so important to have these theorems in front of you and flip back and look back. You can't move forward in this book without thoroughly, well, I don't want to say grasping, but without, without having those other theorems in front of you to refer back to and understanding what they mean. That's, that's what's important. Okay, so let's look at number four. Is this relationship possible? And it, the hint it gives us here is C parallel postulate on, last, on, on um, page 67. So if we flip back to page 67, the parallel postulate, which is postulate 6, says through a given point, one and only one straight line can be drawn parallel to a given line. So if back here... Excuse me, I wrote that as T, but this is transversal T, and they cross at point P. Okay, so the question was, is, is this relationship possible? Can my new line C be parallel to A? Well, if I draw a new line C that is parallel to A, then I was already given that line B was parallel to A at point P, okay? So I'm already told that, you know, here's line B because it's parallel to A with a transversal going through point P. So at point P, one and only one parallel line can be drawn. No, let me go back to it exactly. Through a given point, P, one and only one straight line, B, or line B, which was already drawn, is parallel to a given line, A. Okay? So therefore, C could not be drawn with X being a like a new angle, okay? C and B would have to be the same line because of postulate, parallel postulate. Therefore, step two is impossible because you can't draw a new line, C. It's the same line. So my conclusion is that in fact, D and E are parallel, I mean are equal because B and A lines were parallel. So let's read through their paragraph proof here and see if that jives with what we've just said. Suppose angle D didn't equal angle E. Then a line C may be constructed at point P such that the angle between C and T equals D, the angle between A and T. Then, by theorem 7, C is parallel to A, but B is given parallel to A. And B and C both, both pass through point P. But through a point, only one line may be drawn parallel to a given line. So D does not equal E is a false statement, and D equals E. Okay? So do you see how we can kind of walk through that and prove something, prove the opposite is true? Okay? So let's look at the different corollaries that are given in this um, section as well. Corollary 8.1 says, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are equal. Let's flip back and look at what corresponding angles were, okay? Bottom page 67. Um, in our drawing here, one and five were corresponding angles. So in other words, this angle right here, this interior, ang interior angle, and this exterior angle, but on the same side of the transversal, are equal. So, I mean, are um, called corresponding angles. So, one and five. Okay, so let's go back here. So, what they're saying here is B and A. Let me draw it on a piece of paper over here. 